Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto thee that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against thee by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to thine infinite mercy, seeking and imploring thy grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O most, most merciful God, who has has given thine only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. And by thy Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of thee, and of thy will, and true obedience to thy word to the end that by thy grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, hath had mercy upon us and hath given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgiveth us all our sins. To them that believe on his name he giveth power to become the sons of God and hath promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all.
perform the same. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, and world without end. considering the blessings of your calling and how important it is in God's kingdom. You know, the Blessed Virgin Mary was the chosen vessel of the Lord to conceive the Son of God, and the incarnation happened by the Holy Spirit conceiving Jesus in the womb of the Virgin Mary. So motherhood is a great blessing to the world, but it is also an important vocation in the kingdom of God. Now, we have a voters meeting this Tuesday at 7.30 p.m. via Zoom. And uh, I will send all of you voters access uh, links so that you can join us at 7.30 for our May voters meeting. Please do not forget, 7.30 on Zoom this Tuesday. Bible classes are going on in their usual times and places, and our Sunday morning Bible class is live streamed for the convenience of people who cannot be here. Are there any other announcements that need to be made? Seeing none, our service continues with the reading of God's holy word. The lesson is written in the 29th chapter of Jeremiah. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord, and I will turn away your captivity, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive. Here ended the lesson. The epistle is written in the book of James, chapter 1. St. James writes, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart. This man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Here ended the epistle. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Christ, who hath redeemed us with his blood, is risen and hath appeared unto us. Hallelujah. I came forth from the Father, 
and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. Hallelujah. St. John, the 16th chapter, beginning at the 23rd verse. Jesus said, And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day, ye shall ask in my name. And I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father, and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world, and go to the Father. And his disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I'd like to start today's discussion of the gospel lesson with verse 28. Verse 28, we read, I came forth from the Father and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. Now what Jesus is doing here, he is summarizing his entire life. John's Gospel begins by telling us that in the beginning was the Word, that is the Son of God, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and that the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. John the Baptist confessed of Christ that he is the very Lamb of God sent into the world for the world's redemption. He takes away the sin of the world. He makes the once and for all atonement that ever avails for the sins of everyone so that we may rejoice in the comfort of the forgiveness of sins and the unearned grace of eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. St. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, he says, Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. In other words, Jesus coming into the world according to the will of the Father and the plan of salvation and accomplishing the work of our redemption completely and then leaving the world and going to the Father means that we are now under the New Testament. We are in the accepted time. We are in the day of salvation. And so when Jesus says to his disciples, I came forth from God and am come into the world, again I leave the world and I go to my Father, he is summarizing his entire life on earth and his glorification at the right hand of the Father and so that we may know that our redemption is a purchased and won reality. Or as it says in chapter 14, verse 28, Ye have heard how I said to you, I go away and come again to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice because I said, I go to the Father. And then again, earlier in chapter 16, verse 7, he says, I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away, for if I go not away, the Comforter will not come. And then in chapter 19 of John's Gospel, verse 31, we read these words. When Jesus, therefore, had received the vinegar, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. So, Jesus going to the Father is not, or should not have been distressing to the disciples because it means that redemption has been accomplished and that the blessings of the new covenant are now poured out generously upon all those who believe the good news and rejoice in Jesus Christ. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of 
salvation. So what are the blessings of the atonement? What are the blessings of redemption that Jesus talks about? Well, in chapters 14, 15, and 16 of the Gospel of John, he speaks of numerous blessings. We talked about the gift of the Holy Ghost last week. Today, we want to focus on a few other things. First of all, he says in verse 25, he says, These things I have spoken unto you in Proverbs, that is, in figures of speech. But the time cometh when I shall no more speak to you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. All right, so what Jesus is saying here is that now there are many things that he has said to them that are figurative language and difficult to understand. For example, two weeks ago, when he, when he said, a little while and you shall not see me, and again a little while and you shall see me, because I go to my Father. That is uh, figurative speech, it is enigmatic speech, it's not easy for the disciples to understand, and they said to one another, we, can't, we don't know what he's talking about. Here he says, the time is coming when I will no longer use Proverbs, I will no longer use figurative speech, but I will show you, I will show you plainly of my Father. What time is he speaking of? He's speaking first about his post-resurrection appearances to his disciples, where he spoke to them over the course of 40 days. He spoke to them very plainly about the Father, about himself, about the Holy Spirit coming, and about their mission to preach the gospel to every nation. Then he speaks especially about the coming of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, Jesus will speak to us by means of the Spirit. And the Spirit speaks to us through the written word of the gospel so that Jesus is very active in communicating with his disciples on the day of Pentecost and thereafter, the result of Jesus through the Spirit speaking to the disciples is resulted in the New Testament books being written by the inspiration of God. And through these books, Jesus himself is speaking to us to kindle and sustain and nourish our faith, to encourage us to follow him and to keep our eyes on the prize. So blessing number one in our gospel lesson today is that enigmatic speech will give way to plain talk of Christian doctrine and this is what we have in the New Testament, inspired by the Holy Spirit uh, for our knowledge of God and for our comfort in the grace of God and for our hope of life to come. The second, uh, the second blessing that uh, our gospel lesson speaks of today is the promise of prayer heard and answered in the name of Jesus. Now, I want you to pay careful attention. He says, first of all, whatsoever ye shall ask. All right, so Jesus does not put any limits upon what we may pray for. He says, whatsoever ye shall ask. And then he adds to that by saying, he 
will give it you. And then he says, up until now you have asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. Ask is a imperative word. It's a commandment. We are commanded to pray. But we are also promised that our prayers will be heard and answered and that we will receive what we ask for. All right? So we have the command of God and the promise of God that our prayers will be heard and answered. But right sandwiched in between these two, there is an extremely important phrase. And that extremely important phrase is, whatever you ask the Father, in my name. Now, praying in the name of Jesus does not mean praying like a heathen and then tacking on the magic formula at the end. In the name of Jesus, amen. Right? A lot of Christians pray like that. They pray as if the Lord is Santa Claus. They pray as if just tacking the name of Jesus on the end of the prayer without any regard to what that means is sufficient. And once you say, in the name of Jesus, it's got to happen, all right? What does in the name of Jesus mean? Well, two things. It means chiefly and mostly that we believe that we have access to God and that we have the promise of answered prayer because of Jesus and the redemption that he has purchased and won for us. It is through Jesus that we have been made children of God. It is through Jesus and his redemption that our sins are washed away and that God's grace shines into our life and that God's door is always open for us and his ear is always open to our prayers and our requests. This is what it means to pray in the name of Jesus. It doesn't mean simply to say the words in Jesus' name, but it means to come before God with faith that Jesus is your Redeemer, and in Him the day of grace, the accepted time, the day of salvation is near, and that we are welcomed in the presence of God. A couple of passages of Scripture. First, in the book of Romans chapter 5. The book of Romans chapter 5 verse 1 says this, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see that? We have peace with God through Christ. By whom? By Christ. By Christ also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand. So we stand in the grace of God through Christ, by whom we have access to God. All right? So this is a wonderful thing. We are justified by faith. We have peace with God through Christ, and he has granted us access to the grace in which we stand. We stand in God's grace through Christ, and that's what it means to pray in the name of 
Jesus. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19, it says this. God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. The gospel is the word of reconciliation. All right? And he says, what God was up to, sending his son into the world, and his son suffering and dying and rising again, what God was up to was he was acting to reconcile the world to himself. The world cannot reconcile itself to God unless God reconciles himself to the world. And so the reconciliation has taken place. What does reconciliation mean? It means that two warring parties have been brought together and there is no longer animosity and anger, but there is peace and access and friendship. And this is what we have in Jesus. And that's what it means to pray in the name of Jesus. It means that we pray to God knowing that God is graciously disposed to us. He hears us and he answers our prayers because his son Jesus is our Redeemer. And by faith in him, we have been made the children of God. All right. Now, so we have talked about the fact that the one blessing of Jesus going to the Father is that we will receive the plain speaking of Christian doctrine through the Holy Spirit by Jesus. Remember, he will take what is mine and he will show it to you. Well, this is what the Holy Spirit does and the result is the New Testament so that we know the word of God. And then the second blessing is we know that God is gracious to us for Christ's sake and therefore he hears and answers our prayers. And then the last thing I want to mention today as the Father in love sent the Son in love to redeem sinners. So we are assured of full fellowship with God through Christ. Jesus said, listen, he says, I'm not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. He says, listen, this is how great the redemption is. The Father himself loveth you because you have loved me and have believed that I came forth from the Father, from God. The Father himself loves you. We don't have Jesus as the positive go-between between between us and a reluctant, angry God so that Jesus says, listen, you just use your, you just show them your, your Christian card at the door and you're in. You know, don't worry if he talks rough to you. You know, just show him the card and you're in. It's not like that, right? The Father in love sent the Son into the world to redeem it. And the Father, therefore, loves the Son and loves those who love the Son and believe in him. So your fellowship with God is a fellowship with God the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ, and you are part of this family of God. You have been made children of God by faith in Christ, and therefore the extent of this redemption is wonderful and comforting. 
God is not a reluctant acceptor of Jesus' sacrifice. He's the one who sent the Son into the world. It is the love of the Father and the Son that has resulted in our redemption. And therefore, we may take comfort and boldly come to the Father in Jesus' name, knowing that the Father loves us, the Son loves us, the Spirit loves us, and we are blessed in Christ. Amen. The peace of God that passeth all understanding keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. such endowments of mind and heart 
that they may perform their several duties with diligence, equity, honor, and intelligence. Defend us from all enemies within and without. Remove all grievances from our midst. Inspire obedience to the law. Overthrow all workers of unrighteousness and grant us a love of holiness and purity. For all who toil in industry, we pray that they may prosper and receive the fruits of their labor. To all who serve thee in the professions, grant the satisfaction of a noble work. Bless the farmers and all who produce the fruits of the soil, that they may have favorable weather and a bountiful harvest, and ever acknowledge thee, who art the giver of our daily bread. Bless all of our loved ones. Especially do we remember before thee the sick and those who mourn. We remember before you especially Florence, Eva, Ermgard, and Grant. Let them seek thee and receive thy gracious help and be mercifully delivered from all their distresses. We give thee thanks for our mothers and pray that thou wilt bless them today and every day, that they may thank thee for thy goodness and mercy. And now, O oh Lord, keep us steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in thy work, for as much as we know that in thee our labor is not in vain. In the name of Jesus we pray always. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Blessed Lord, who has caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may in such wise hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them that by patience and comfort of thy holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which thou hast given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen.